Hello guys. Um, so I figured I'd make a quick little video since I'm going to be uh, uh, banking some yeast that I just uh, uh, propagated up, built up. I uh, bought some Y yeast uh, London Ale 3 uh, a little while ago and I'm planning on uh, brewing a you know New England IPA on uh, on Sunday. This is Thursday night on Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to everyone out there. Um, so I'm basically what I did is I took the smack pack on Monday night. I smacked it. I built up a nice big starter, um, and I just uh, cold crashed it today. You can't off some of the yeast, as you can probably see here. Uh, maybe not. Maybe if I raise it, there you go. Um, I decanted off about uh, 100 milliliters um, of fairly thick trub, I guess. Not trub, I should say. Fairly thick yeast um, that was in the starter. And uh, basically split what was there. I decanted some off in this measuring cup. And um, I basically started another starter with what was left. So I just finished that. And now I'm going to put that yeast into some tubes and I'm going to freeze it. Um, third attempt at doing this. Um, I did a uh, full 25 vials with uh, some Pac-Man yeast which is rapidly becoming my uh, favorite strain for, for neutral ales. Um, and I current, as I said I have 25 vials. Um, I bought these same tubes and uh, froze them all. Um, the batch, I have another little video out there that I uh, I put up yesterday or put up a couple days ago, whenever it was, um, to show my little uh, Krause and Catcher clone or my little device for a uh, kind of a CO2 reservoir. I like that name better um, as an airlock. Um, that beer, I uh, basically, uh, not basically, that beer, I, uh, I it fermented and it fermented quick with uh, the first attempt of some Pac Man yeast that I froze. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I did use two vials for that, and they were right up to about the, you know, these are 15 milliliter uh, sterile vials that I use. Um, I did, I think they were filled up to about the 12 milliliter mark. I did use two tubes because the, uh, the my first attempt, the uh, my yeast was fairly thin, but the yeast looked nice and healthy. I start created a starter from it. Um, I was a little worried that I might have underpitched a little bit, but uh, after three days, it the beer was 150 uh, was uh, 1.050 or 1050 uh, starting gravity. I should have got down to about uh, 1018 or so, and it pretty much finished fermentation in three days. So I'm really happy with uh, with that. So it seemed like you know I pitched enough, propagated up enough, and everything worked, went really well. But anyway, what I did, so so basically I'm using a process that I will link. It's from uh, Homebrew, from Homebrew Talk. It was an article on their site. Um, I can't remember the, the author of the article is right now, but I am going to, but I did follow that process and I'll link it. And uh, it is exactly what I, what I did, or for the most part. So basically I have some sterile tubes here. I'm probably gonna fill up 12 or 13 of these, uh, maybe a few more depending on how the, uh, the yeast stretches. Um, it's showing in the measuring in the measuring glass there that I have um, about uh, that's about between 50 and 100 milliliters. I am probably going to be putting um, about six or seven milliliters in each vial here, um, and I'll just use what I can and uh, go from there. So what the process is, you need to add some uh, some glycerin, is what it is. If I look on my shelf. Yes, glycerin. Um, you have a gl glycerin mixture with your with your yeast. You add some glycerin to it, and equal in equal uh, measures here, um, and uh, and then you go through a slow freezing process, which we're obviously not going to see. But but really, what I did again, this stuff is pretty pretty straightforward. Um, I bought these little mason jars. They're four ounces. And I believe the mixture is kind of uh, 30 milliliters of uh, glycerin, 
to 70 milliliters of water and then I put this through my uh, through my canner through my pressure canner and you know put it through the autoclave process so this is sterile so now I have uh, you know a good uh, another 10 of these jars that I'm, that I'm holding aside that I've already are ready to go with you know ster a sterile mixture of glycerin so that when I'm going to fill up my tubes I just need to worry about having my starter done when I come time to actually freeze it up like I'm about to do here now I just pull off a jar and you know equal parts into the tubes and then I freeze it so let me get started here as I've been kind of doing a quite a bit of the intro really the process is pretty straightforward I do have my I am just using some disposable pipettes here excuse me Thanksgiving dinner is giving me a uh, a little bit of the, the burps um, so yeah I just really just fill this right up you know this was soaking in star sand and I really just go by the, the measurements on these actual tubes itself so I kind of like that again don't need to be too particular yeah what do we got in here and this is on my little tripod there, that's about six. Let me put in a little bit more. All right, so you can probably see here, that's right around six milliliters, six and a half, and we'll go with that. Oh, put this here for now. Oh, I need to pop my, did I get this lid off? I got the band off, but I didn't pop the, change the seal here. Try to do this in a way so it's not going to go everywhere. There you go. See a nice tight seal. Now I just start adding equal parts of this mixture. Is that there? And again, I don't need to worry about contamination of the the glycerin mixture here. All right, so I'm right about six. Just going to be adding this right up to obviously from here if i have started at six i'm going to go right up to 12. i'm at 10. we're at 12 there now and i'm done so that's one tube complete all right we just screw it down give it a little shake And then it's ready to be frozen. So if you're curious about this and you go and actually read the article that I'm going to be posting, um, there is, you know, multiple methods mentioned in the article for yeast banking. Um, I chose this one because it seemed like the best mix of you get to keep your yeast for, you know, supposedly it's good for two or three years and you can stockpile quite a bit away, right, at six again. Um, so, so that's the approach I took. The other approach was just the, something I did before, which was just, you know, saving your beer in the fridge on top of uh, in mason jars, you know, storing it on beer, so to speak. Um, I thought that was working out pretty good for me, but it, uh, you need to be pretty active with your uh, with how you're using your yeast because it doesn't last terribly long in the refrigerator it degrades pretty fast and unbeknownst to me I ruined a couple of batches not this past summer but the summer before because I was going at that method and I kept you know reusing and reusing generations and I'm pretty sure it's got infected with either some Brett or uh, some wild yeast and you know it's after I thought about it I was like what in the hell is going on with my beer the wort tastes great you know I I taste the beer you know and you know it has this really funky off flavor that at the time I was blaming it on the malt because I kept using this specific malt from a local maltster and I said, oh, there must be something funky about their malt. But no, it was the yeast. 
I made batches after when I just went to dry yeast and it worked fine. And uh, that's 10. Yeah, nothing exciting here. But um, I guess the only other thing to add that was in the article about uh, how we actually freeze this yeast, and I'm going to do the same thing. I've saved a little container of it, is when we freeze our vials of yeast here, um, usually I have a little cooler, you know, that I have some ice packs in, small cooler that I keep in my freezer, uh, my, our main freezer, it's not a chest freezer, so it's a kind of an upright one, and it goes through defrost cycles. Um, from what I understand, you know, those temperature swings when the, the freezer is undergoing a defrost cycle could really damage the long-term viability of the yeast we're storing away here. So, you know, I, I store it inside a cooler with some ice packs to kind of prevent that. Um, but also, when you actually freeze this, and the article is going to mention it as well, it's going to recommend that you, uh, you freeze it um, for the first 24 hours in some uh, rubbing alcohol or I can't pronounce the I can't remember the exact name iso isopor isopor um, anyway rubbing alcohol some rubbing alcohol uh, you submerge the vials in that in that first and uh, for that first 24 hours and you know these vials will free solid um, but at least it's going to uh, keep the the rate of freezing for these vials to be uh, a little um, not be as quick and help the long-term viability of the uh, frozen yeast. Um, there, the article explains more in, in detail. Um, I guess the author of the article did both ways. Um, it's, it worked for both fine for him when he didn't put it in the alcohol directly initially, but. Uh, you know, he, I guess he, he uh, claims that he was getting better viability from uh, storing the yeast or freezing the yeast initially in the rubbing alcohol. And again, apologies. On, I don't know how well this is centered on the camera because the camera is here to my left on a little funky little tripod. And I'm not looking at the screen at all. Right, so who knows? Maybe I'm talking away here and you're not looking at anything but, but my arms and wrists moving. But again, um, so that's about it. Um, I'll probably either fast forward this or I'll cut here while I finish um, getting through my vials and kind of have a quick little wrap up discussion. Um, the only, I think, the important thing that I'm not mentioned here is you know, you need to have really good records of, of what of you know what 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 yeast you have when it's been created propagated stored and everything else right so the idea here is obviously um, with all these vials is uh, you know we obviously need to know which strain we're using when we pull it out of the freezer um, I'm not going to do it initially but but my what I have been doing is um, just writing a small little code and a number on the top here you know for my pac-man yeast it's pm and then just a number um, then i have this number cross reference with a spreadsheet that i stored on my that i have on my computer um, basically with just information of you know when you know what was the original uh, birth date so to speak from the y yeast package um, when did i freeze it and then when did i use it just so i have a record of of what we're actually doing here and again, you know, sanitation is pretty important, obviously. Um, I don't think I need to worry too much right here. Um, you know, as I was saying, the glycerin here, this glycerin solution was, um, you know, went through a canning process. Um, so that's all really well mixed up. As you can see, it's very fluid. Um, pretty, pretty easy to deal with once you go through that. Um, the... Um, you know the jar here was uh, the jar the measuring cup was uh you know it was clean obviously and then i star sand the heck out of it the pipette itself is you know it's plastic but uh it was soaking in some star sand for a good um good 10 15 minutes before i before i picked it up and started to use it here you know and then once i'm done with it it's gonna go in the trash um 
you know, all this stuff here, these tubes, um, these pipettes, you know, not the mason jars though. Um, very inexpensive to get some of this uh, stuff on uh, on Amazon where I've purchased it. I'm sure you could probably get it on eBay as well. Um, you know, this is kind of scientific equipment, so to speak. Um, so I don't know about you, but I don't really have a, a local supplier that would uh, have access to buy this in a brick and mortar store. But, uh, you know, Amazon is our friend in the new, in the new age. Um, I, I will add, you know, I've, I know there, you know, before I started trying this, I've watched a couple of videos out there on eBay of what other folks were doing. Um, some people I've seen, they use, uh, these little five milliliter glass jars, which are fine. Um, those are not necessarily sterile. Um, but they do put those, you know, if you do use non-sterile tubes or non-sterile little, little small jars, you need to make sure that, um, you know, before you use those, um, you put those through your pressure canner on the, you know, the highest um, sterile setting. And I should mix this up. There's quite a bit of yeast that are on, that's on the bottom of the jar here. I want to make sure I get that rather than a little bit of true that's in my starter. Um, that up. I've been trying to pull from kind of the bottom here. What do I have left here? I have seven tubes done. Um, I'm sure I have enough here to do at least three more, if not more. And uh, that's about it. I will, you know, as I said, I will do up to 12, maybe even 13. Um, you know, I don't want to. Uh, use up all my tubes and that's it so yeah just thought I would share um, you know again I really like this idea of yeast banking and having you know yeast strains that I like to use and having them on hand so I can create starters rather than um, having to run out to the homebrew store and see what they have or try to order something online um, I don't know what your experience has been with yeast ordering it online um, you know, I've had some horror stories where I've, you know, I've, I've gotten dead yeast before. Um, you know, some of the liquid yeast was has arrived and was kind of dead on arrival from getting too warm. So um, I really like, you know, having some dedicated freezer space to uh, my yeast banks. And uh, and I think I will cut it there. And um, maybe uh, what I will do is um, I'll add a second part to this video. I'll record record a second part. Um, and uh, just show you what this will end up uh, looking like uh, post uh, post freezing. Um, as I said, I'm going to put this in the freezer. I'm not going to worry about labeling these right now. It's pretty obvious what they are, and I will, uh, you know, I will will be freezing them. And then once they're free frozen, I'll uh, label the tops um, again, kind of the culprit in, in the whole thing. The reason I'm waiting on labeling them is. If you use a Sharpie on the, on the tops of these and then you put it in alcohol, the alcohol is going to erase, is going to erase all the uh, erasure code or erasure marking, which is kind of a, you know, it's not too good. Um, so we've got there six. I mean, it'll erase the marking and, you know, the, the stuff, if it's in the freezer, it's not going to evaporate and it's going to stay on your tubes. Um, but yeah, that'll be a pretty, uh, probably be a good kind of second part to this whole little video. Um, and, you know, as you can see, you know, I have plenty of the glycerin mixture left here. You know, there's a lot more of that than the yeast I had. So obviously I'm not going to keep this. This is obviously going to get uh, um, cleaned up the jar is going to be kept and the rest of this glycerin mixture is going to be tossed to be used in the future. So that's about it. Let me uh, stop the recording there and uh, we'll see you in this second part um, in a few minutes. Uh, hello folks. Um, back 24 hours or thereabouts has passed um, from my little yeast freezing video. Here is my, let you get it out of here. Here is my frozen vials from last night. 
Um, stand, take out some of these nice packs so I can readjust. Um, what I have in here is my Pac-Man yeast. Previously mentioned that I froze. Um, put it on the side so I can get in there. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Previously frozen vials. Ooh. It's hard to see what is in here as far as yeast goes. Some of these you can kind of see true, but there's a little bit of yeast. I'm hoping there's some frozen yeast up in here. Um, let me look at an older one. Yeah, this one has a bit more yeast in here. You can kind of see it's frozen. Um, some that I did from the second go around. Let's see. Yeah, I think this is the second attempt um, I thought I did better I might have done worse by the looks of it you can see there's a little bit in here I'm hoping that actually frozen up in suspension here is more of the actual yeast it's hard to kind of tell um, this was as I kind of um, demark it this is Pac-Man 25 0 25 so oops can wait for the top down base packs back in here we'll close that we don't want them to defrost um, not in much uh, much risk of having them thaw on me pretty quick but here is uh, isopropyl propyl propyl alcohol uh, <laughs> I did uh, you know I luckily I ran out so I just uh, to get them to stand up kind of good I uh, cut them all off and put it in this in the actual bottle it looks like these are freezing much better so really the idea here is you know, I get some yeast on the top by the looks of it a lot of troops some down in here um, there's yeast in here but really the idea is I'm gonna take these out quick wipe them down quickly demarcate the top yeah, you can kind of see there's yeast. Looks like there's a lot of trube in here. I mean, maybe some of this is yeast that actually died as well. Oh, you can see these aren't really truly frozen, which is kind of good, actually. Um, yeah, some more frozen in here. Good, it's not fully frozen. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this going kind of quick because I'm actually happy at this point they're not tr truly frozen, but I don't want them to thaw out or get too warm before I let them freeze so um, the idea is here right I'm wiping these down I want to get something written on the top here to demark these I'm gonna um, call all these L3 and then 001 because I'm assuming by the time I'm done here I'm gonna get in triple digits it doesn't take long to Get a bunch of these vials together. Um, three zero zero two three zero zero three zero four, 3 0 3 0 4 and I do have an elastic band here that I'm going to Use to bind these up so I can get these to stay together. Zero five. And again, the risk. Zero zero six. Um, and again, the reason I'm marking these now is because. Um, the rubbing alcohol does a great job to just deteriorate my markings on here, the Sharpie markings. Uh, zero, something, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. And this stuff doesn't need to be perfect, just needs to zero, zero, eight. Just needs to be good enough to um, 
be able to keep your records. Zero, zero, nine, and really, um, that's pretty much it, uh, really. Um, not a whole lot to show in this video here. Um, really just that, uh, how they kind of look after zero. I guess really even at this point, since they're out of the alcohol, like I'm probably right on here as well. Might be, yeah, this is not great either. Let's see, it just wipes off. So, one, one. All right, and that's it. They're going back in this cooler and they're going back in my freezer where they will surely freeze in short order. As you can see, you can just put an elastic band around these so they can kind of stay together and kind of stay upright. And that is it. That is the process. And you can even see here, yeah, I'm getting some smudges on this and it rapidly is losing its effectiveness. <laughs> Thought I did a better job wiping it off, but uh, we'll see when I get these uh, the band around all these and see how it looks. Ugh. The problem with these freaking tubes, they uh, the way they're shaped, they don't want to stay together in a, any sort of fashion. Uh, L3, we got here one, known four, seven. Let's see, my writing is kind of horrible on these. I don't know if you can see or not, but three, two, L three, five, L three, don't know, L three, eight, ten, seven. I don't know. But anyway, I will cut it there. Uh, again, that's the process that I'm using. Um, you can see the ones, these are cooling quickly. I'm probably doing a real detriment by handling and, and letting the temperature come up. So I'm going to get these back in the freezer ASAP and you can see when they get fully frozen what they kind of look like and uh, hopefully if I need to bring up more starters of my London uh, 3 Ale, London Ale 3, um, these will do it for me. Alright, thanks for watching.